Catch all the action at Boston Pizza, Canada's favorite sports bar. It's time to bring the cup home, and we will be there at Boston Pizza in Bowmanville next Saturday. The show sold out in like an hour and a half. Uh, is that good? That's that's amazing. And uh, we the so, Manville is showing up. Yeah. Uh, so thank you all to those who bought tickets. And listen, for those that were not able to get them, what we're hoping is that uh, Boston Pizza allows us to do a few more. Did you see that Jim Treliving shouted us out? Did he? What? Yeah. Jim Treliving. So Jim Treliving of Boston Pizza before Leafs game on Saturday tweeted, "The countdown is over. We created Boston Pizza for weekends like this, and we are ready." Let's get the NHL playoffs started. Wow. He must have been talking we about us. We are going to be at Boston Pizza. He's talking the about weekend. us, right? Yeah. He's 100% talking about us. Jim. 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 And this Jim. year is Canada's year for taking back our nation's game, and Boston Pizza will be the host of it all. The beer will be flowing. The atmosphere will be electric, especially next Saturday in Bowmanville. Not that I'm biased. Oh. Jim might be there. He might. He might. He might <laughs> visit one of his locations. I don't know. Don't forget, we're going for Canada getting a cup. So we got to come together as fans. There's no Canadian team versus Canadian team in the first round anyway. Toronto's in Canada. Yeah, that's right. So we're hope, we're, we're cheered for one of the four Canadian teams. Not according to Western Canada. And wow. also, yeah, Depends I know. Who you ask, I, I guess. know. Boston Pizza's new limited time playoff menu is filled with exciting shareables, which uh, we actually tried out last week, yep. and they're delicious. Uh, so check it out, and we will see you next Saturday. Let's talk about it. Baby. Jesse Blake. Let's go! And if anybody was going to open the scoring in this series, it was going to be John Beecher. The guy that Steve <laughs> said, hey, I've never heard of him, so he's probably going to open the scoring in the series. It's not that it happened. It's that it took two minutes. Like That's, that's all it un- took. That's unbelievable. And the Leafs were out shooting them at that point for nothing. Really good start. They had already made Swayman make a couple good saves. I've never seen a game so winnable be lost by such a margin well <laughs> and we will get to that we are going to get to the full thing but i want to just talk specifically about john beach i want you to imagine because i wanted to i want to talk quickly about how boston picks boston guys they just what are steve, the best steve we have in, in, in marketing people will know this um they'll have like a target audience and they'll make it into a person so i remember at virgin radio her name was like Nicole and she was 28 and she was single, but dating and this and that had all these characteristics of the target audience that we were going for. Right. Got it. So if Boston had a target man and we'll call him Ross Boston, Ross Boston, they, no one finds Ross Boston's like the Boston Bruins. What is a Ross Boston? Break it down. Uh, they don't have to be big, but it's a plus belligerent, Willing to skate through a brick wall or at very least try to drive the net, be a jerk, try. Try harder than the other team. Is the other team better than you? They're not going to have a better effort than you. They are the hardest, one of the hardest working teams in the National Hockey League. They probably have the best amateur and pro scouting in the league, just in terms of they have a mandate from up top. Here's what a Boston Bruin looks like. And they go out and they draft them and they sign them and they trade for them every single time. The one thing I'll say is that every time the trade deadline rolls around, Boston's in it and they get their guy. And they always seem to find you always go, oh, that's a that's a big amount of money to pay. I think Ryan Hartman was the most I saw them pay for somebody that I thought, hmm, I'm not sure. Hampus Lindholm was a big trade. Charlie Coyle wasn't. Andre Kasha, they paid a first. (laughs) Yeah. But But that was COVID doesn't count. But when they get them, they are guys that work out almost to a person. It's rare that you see Boston screw up a trade. Charlie Coyle has been such a good Bruin that he was never on the Minnesota Wild. Yeah. It's like Brent Burns was never a Minnesota Wild either. Right? He was such a good shark. What are you talking about? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... John Beecher, first round pick. 30th overall. Hey, yeah. First round pick. First round pick. Like, they don't, they don't quali- have the qualifiers when you say you're a first round pick. That's right. That's an 80 That's, second. I, I was shocked to learn that. I heard you read in the LFR. And if we want to play Steve calling this happening, I have it ready in Cuba. Oh, go, go ahead. Let's go see. ahead. <laughs> Here, It didn't happen in the SDP. It happened in the Boston Toronto preview. Oh, I couldn't remember. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. either. So here it is. Geeky Frederick. Are you fucking joking? <laughs> Beecher Boyquist Maroon. I haven't heard of Beecher, uh, which means he'll be the first to score tomorrow. JVR is the healthy. <laughs> 
<laughs> like literally, <laughs> you said he was going to be the first to score. Not he's going to score. The first. You nailed. <laughs> it's so good. Should put money on that. It's so good. <laughs> I I really I really I don't bet against the Leafs <laughs> except but, for this series. But if I did, yeah, I would just rake in cash. You clean up. Like just oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I actually have more of my voice today than I did yesterday. Yeah, those allergies. Yeah. Fourth line oh. player. Um, it's cool to see. Well, Boston's such a good team. Like they play a really four line hockey and the system they play where I forget who was talking the post. I think it, it might have been in Marner's comments where he was talking about how calm and patient they play. And I think yes. that, that's the true difference. I thought in game one between them. Well, we'll get into it. the game and all that stuff. But yeah. like even out of that fourth line, if you want to uh, sp uh, specifically talk about Beecher and Boyquist and Maroon like they have a patience with the puck where they let the game come to them and they always make the right decisions in those moments and they're uh, they're so agile like what what they can be well not Maroon okay with the ex yeah man dude <laughs> Like he, he's like, like a muscle car from the seventies. He only goes in a straight line, and if he's turning, it's like why? But man, like, he's good career threatening injury on Minnesota. Uh, is he going to be out of the league? Is any contending team going to want him? First unit power play on the Bruins. Are you joking? Doesn't he feel like a Boston Bruin? Yes, though? yes. Pat it's Maroon weird he like, wasn't previously. He's yeah. been working his entire life up until this moment to when he could become a Boston Bruin. This this <laughs> dude who looks like he eats antelope. Like whole and alive, <laughs> <laughs> whose nickname is Big Rig. What is that supposed? Has what does never. That mean? I mean, it means he's a freaking animal, Jesse. Yeah, okay, okay. Have you ever um, seen? Num, num. Have you ever seen Madagascar? Yes. Where the lion gets hungry when he's out on his own and everybody turns into a steak. That's, that's him. That's that's Pat Maroon. That's him. <laughs> Alex the lion. He is Alex the lion. Just what did they? What was the trade? It, uh, honestly, like. I think it was like that. not even a Kinder Surprise toy, just the shell. <laughs> for Patrick. Just the shell. Yeah. To the wild. For Patrick Maroon. <laughs> Orange shell. You can just throw the head shell. Class. I want to. I'm just looking on Cap Friendly here to bring up his page. Endless. We're going to hate it. We're gonna hate it. Ceaseless. Pay. I should have <laughs> known. Going to hate it. Why didn't I know the Leafs were going to play the Bruins? Like, why was I surprised? The second they got Pat Maroon, I should have known. All right. Here's the trade that known. happened on March 8th, trade deadline day. A uh, sixth round conditional pick. And <laughs> Luke. Toporowski. I Toporowski. know, I know I that player. Yeah. yeah. Um, the conditions on the sixth round pick are the sixth round pick is transferred to Minnesota if Patrick Maroon plays in one playoff game. So oh, well. the conditions have been met. Uh, they acquired Maroon for Luke and a sixth. That's, that is that's, a, 2026. Six. That's the shell and the toy. That's, yeah. That's a gross overpay. <laughs> Oh well, my goodness, compared to what I thought. Tampa traded him away for a seventh in 2023 in July. Yes, because the cap. Yeah. How does a guy so go look through his career? He <laughs> routinely gets traded for fucking nothing. Yeah, nothing. And all he does is win. It's signed for nothing, too. It's crazy. He's always like a million or below. He went yeah. to four straight cup finals. I know. Even the even <laughs> when he was moved to the Devils, like the Oilers got a third and then yeah, like, and then he traded away for a seventh. Like, he hasn't been traded for that that yeah, much. Here's what I would like to know. Take all of the games of all of the players that were traded for Pat Maroon Ugh. and add them up <laughs> and see if they can can even get to half of the amount of games. So you play. want Martin Gurnat. Luke Toporowski. Luke. <laughs> Joey Dudek. Yeah. Martin. Yeah. Martin Gurnat. Jody Dudek. Um, <laughs> Who's Jody Dudek? Did you, don't don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I don't the know. most expensive Bob price. Bordson and Danny Svert. No, it's Danny Sivret, and I know Sivret. that because he's my cousin's buddy. Actually, oh really? <laughs> yeah, they played hockey together. Oh, that's cool. oh wow. Um, but uh, for, yeah, because I have family members who can play hockey, just not me. Uh, the <laughs> most expensive price anyone ever paid for Patrick Maroon is the Edmonton Oilers. It was Joey Dudek and a 2019 third. No, they traded him away for that. The, oh, the Devils right. acquired Maroon for that price. When was Maroon an Oiler? Yeah. Really? Oh, was he part of that 2017 run? So 2016, the Oilers acquired Maroon for Martin Gurnat and a fourth, who ended up becoming Jack Kopaka. I don't Jack know. Jack Kopaka. No, I, you know, I, I, you I know recognize the name. name. Yeah. Anyway, like. What a career. He so routinely <laughs> makes playoffs teams better playoff teams. 
while contributing like 14 points in the These, regular season. Like it's crazy. Is it is it fair to say that the Leafs often don't make these kinds of moves where oh, yeah. a guy who's on your fourth line, who has pedigree, who's oh. an animal, is never acquired to the Leafs for these cheap prices? Dude, they it, Patrick Maroon, it was sometime during COVID, but he was a free agent. I want to say it was after either his first or second cup with Tampa. He was on, I want to say it was uh, Ennis and Bunkus. Like he was yep. on a, a Toronto sports radio show, basically saying his sales pitch to the audience why he should be signed by the Leafs. Damn. Corey Perry. Did, yep. Corey Perry really wanted to be didn't here. Didn't want him. Yep. I don't but To know. be fair, like, Wayne Simmons was spectacular until he had that wrist injury. I'm, yeah, not, I'm never going to get mad about it's, that. Yeah, it's revisionist. Uh, I still don't hate the Nick Felino logic. Mm -hmm. uh, he just back snapped. Like, what do you want? Maroon's yeah. current cap hit is a million dollars. His highest ever cap hit in his career was $2 million wow. when he played for the Ducks. See, I think his salary is a million dollars. I think his cap hit is lower. No, his cap hit is a million dollars. I just had it. Yeah, just because, it. because he was uh, retained. I think Tampa retained. Oh. And, and so it was a million, but Tampa is... Modified no back. trade. Right now. Is oh, no wonder he ended up in Boston. Oh, my God. I yeah. Mean, and the, yeah, so the highest ever in his career was when he played with the Ducks. It was uh, two million bucks. I like, mean, the guy that the guy played next to McDavid for a couple seasons. Like, it's no joke. I know. Dude, there's no trash to be talked no you, you can't like about you pat maroon no 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 like uh, just about that godforsaken hockey team yeah hmm. well we'll get into that like, but first let's look ahead with the bet mgm big story you know i didn't want steve to go down the garden path not yet not yet i'm ready i'm ready but not yet forma le bouche ah uh, that was very good, Jesse. Is that, is that I think correct? it's Ferme, but that's still... Nah, I, I did it. Farme? No, you just don't understand <laughs> the accent. You're yeah, right. You're right. It's, it's a specific that's... French dialect. Tonight, uh, as you may or may not know, my Canucks, yes. my Canucks are taking on the evil villains of the National Hockey League, which is the Nashville Predators. Oh, here, wait. Can you say the two teams involved again? So Vancouver. Yeah. Nashville. Oh, boo. Yeah, right? See, <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Um, Definitely. Listen, they rode they rode the magic of Bono right to the playoffs, but it's time for the Canucks to put an end to this. Yeah. Now, I will say this. The Canucks are uh, far less experienced in the playoff as a roster than the Nashville Predators are, but... There are some interesting props going into this. And Jesse, I thought we you, 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 you kind of pulled some together. These are like parlays. I wanted to, before we get into the pre-built same game parlays. Okay. Steve, did you have just like off the top of your brain, something that a lean you would put $2 on and I could just look it up. Any player, pro, any goals, anybody you're guaranteed is going to hit something tonight? Vancouver, Nashville. Ooh, really interesting. I'm trying to yeah, Vancouver, a Nashville. former. You know who's the type of guy to score in a game like this for no good reason? Ryan McDonough. Mm. Oh, that's an interesting. How one. many goals did he even have this season? Like, I don't know, six. Any season, really. I'm going to say Ryan McDonough. Ryan McDonough he... to score any goal is 15 to 1. Wow. So your $2 would net you 30 bucks. I'm feeling it. And if he scored the first goal, like you put money, he said he's going to score the first goal, 66 to 1. It, it oh, just, wow. <laughs> wow. I Holy. love that. I take that. So if you got How like, confident are you? if you have the voodoo still going with the beacher <laughs> and you want to put the first goal scored by Ryan McDonough, 66 to one. Yeah. But if we're going Canucks, JT Miller. Mm. Yes, I thought so, too. So but if you want to go depth Canucks, here are my two names. OK, OK. And I want to know what the odds are. Okay. First one had a great year. Great year. Former Leafs pick Dakota Joshua. Yeah. You want to know what his odds are? Do, Jesse, you were talking about like players the Leafs could use. Dakota Joshua. I love Dakota. I picked him up in fantasy on the free agent wire, like I want to say like November-ish. And he was on a tear all season long until he got injured. Ah, right. But he was such a big help for me when he was in the lineup. 4.4 4 to 1. Not so bad. Not, not, he's like in the mid-tier odds. Here's yeah. my other one. Mm -hmm. And this comes from, because there are certain players that are just playoff people. Like, we only have you here because you're good in the playoffs. Pat Maroon, we talked about him, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Teddy Bluger. Teddy Teddy Blue Blugers. <laughs> yeah. From Teddy Riga, Teddy. Latvia. That's right. Teddy Bluger, seven times your money. That's wow. It's, to score any goal. 
Are you telling me it's half Ryan McDonough that Teddy? Yeah, Ryan scores? McDonough has one of like the worst odds to score. It just I don't know. Maybe it's because I have a bottle opener made out of his hockey stick, oh, but I'm that's feeling it. it. <laughs> and, and you mentioned uh JT Miller in there. They had a pre built same game parlay. It's uh five point two five on the decimal odds, so about five times your money. Canucks win. JT Miller scores, and the total of the game is over five and a half goals. Oh, so you six take goals that. are scored in the game. Oh, I yeah. The only thing that's, that's a you know bit what of year a, it is bit of a fly in the ointment there yeah. is is a six goal game total involving the Nashville Predators, mm. right? Because I it's not that they don't score goals, and it's not that they don't allow goals. They do both. Uh, they do a lot more scoring than allowing. It's that it's Barry Trotz's hockey team, coached by Andrew Brunette, and it's game one of the playoffs. Yeah, They're going to game go, one. They're game gonna go one's full dumb. Trap. Nah, game one's dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Game okay. One's dumb. I'm feeling an early goal too. So would you put a two dollars Steve on that? I would. Okay. If you want to lean with Adam, because you can edit the same game parlay. Uh, if you want to go under five and a half goals, say it's five or less. All right. All right. Uh, it increases the odds because it's very less likely. Eight point seven five times your money. So nearly nine to one. What? What's your parlay? That would be J T Miller scoring. Yes. Under five and a half. And uh, Canucks win. Ooh, ooh, and it's how much times your money? Uh, let me triple check. Eight point seven five. Yeah, times your money. Mm. Crosby takes that bet. <laughs> why? Why Crosby? Because he follows eight seven wherever he goes. Oh, <laughs> that's that's good. Good. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So that is your bet, MGM big story. It's going to be a really, really fun night. I think if if we're being honest. Last night, the games were not great. Neither game was great. I don't agree. With if you love defensive I think Boston lockdowns, fans liked it. I'm sure Boston fans liked it. I'm sure Carolina fans liked it. If it, it, They were not like electric, remember these for the rest of your life games. But that's okay because we got the Lightning Panthers tonight. We got the Capitals Rangers. We got the Jets Avalanche. And of course, my Canucks beating up on the Nashville Predators. So I want you to uh, go to betmgm.com slash dangle. Check out all the odds. Check out what you're into. I'm actually most like we're, we're actually right now a few minutes into the Lightning Panthers game as we're recording. That's so weird. A whole day of hockey, baby. Let's go. Love it. So listen, guys. Uh, we just had a really good 30 second chat. We did. Because I thought we were recording. So we were talking about the fact that we rarely record during games anymore. Um, thankfully, because this is our job now. But there was a time when we used to record even during Leaf games, which was dumb. And I miss no, it was Anders and Hyman's first NHL game. It wasn't dumb. It was we had no other choice. Well, yeah, I the worked. Best we could do. I worked till seven o'clock when I was at Tim and Sid. Yeah, not, yeah. not dumb. Just <laughs> unfortunate. Uh, yes, yes. It wasn't dumb. It was we had to do that. Yeah, stupid. <laughs> Genuinely friggin' brainless. And Anyway, yeah, yeah, no, this is, oh my God, what a distraction. And by the way, if you're wondering, in case you missed last episode, the reason we have one today is because we will be having a game uh, right after every single Leaf game. So we'll have one Sunday. A show. Have a yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah. It, that's that's what We I mean. don't play games. No, we game. don't play. Yeah. We don't play the games? No, no. Oh, I we thought don't. we were that's, Once a year. It, Adam, if, that's, your opinion would matter if you played the game. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, see? <laughs> you see? Okay, so we have uh, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday this week. And of course, we got an ex extra episode on Saturday right before the game. Um, so are we doing Boston Saturday, Boston. Sunday? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. My wife wanted to know. Sorry about that. She'll be through. Oh, yeah. It yeah. is an extra episode. <laughs> it is. Yeah. We got four coming. So you're getting... You're getting well, if you're a SDP VIP, you got five. That's right. This is what I'm saying. SDP for every day of the week. Well, if you're Damn. an SDP VIP ad free, you get five ad free. Well, Whoa. you could listen to... You could get 10 because you can listen to both of them. You can yeah. listen to the ad version and yeah, then you're the a ad real free. fan. <laughs> You'll listen to both. <laughs> you'll, okay. you'll you'll be like, oh, I, I finished the ad free one. Now let me go listen to the ad oh, one. Oh, because I oh, love yeah. them and I want to support their business. <laughs> oh, you're an SDP fan? Prove it. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> listen listen to ten shows a week. <laughs> It'd actually be nine because the VIP one's already ad free. Shut oh, up. So. <laughs> listen to all. Are nine. you selling this thing or not? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've only had one day of the playoffs. Uh, and oh I just want to say this. Steve will be streaming every Leaf game. I will be streaming every Canuck game. Jesse will be pre-streaming every Leaf game. And he's doing one tonight for me for the Canucks. Yeah, I'm going to try and, try and get on as many pre-games as for your streams as well. So I'm going tonight at 8.30. And what did you do, by the way, before we get into the Leafs, what did you do last night? Who did you trade? I was really upset. We had to we had to move out some contracts. Klingberg, uh, his, he wanted too much on the extension, so we moved him out. But we got Caden Gooley. That's a great... <laughs> 
from squat. the from the Canadians. We threw it. We had to throw out a draft pick, you know, to to pay the price because I think it's an upgrade in the younger player who's cheaper and almost same talent. So that was good. We're moving out. We moved out Max Domi. So upsetting, dude. Uh, Nick Paul, we got back. Who's Ooh. who's like a really good deal for the next couple of years, like three point two million dollars for like three seasons. So we want that solid locked in. Max Domi wanted too much on his extension. On his extension, and when. He like in the fake video game world because we were like, hey, do you want to resign for us next year? And he's like, hey, yeah, I want to do that. But like for five point seven million dollars or something around there. And I was like, no, that's too much. And then someone in the chat asked, what's the number you would do for Max Domi in real life? And I wanted to propose that question to you guys because I thought five point five, I think it was or five point seven in the game and in real life was too much. Uh, Number went down last night. Where do you guys nah. decide with that? <laughs> number went down last night. <laughs> first off, first off, the number is uh, 12 million over three years. So it's four oh, times four, four times four. Yeah. And and I think I think he's staying. Uh, I think if you saw his Instagram before the game yep. uh, and you got fired up, that's because you have a pulse. Congratulations. Yep. And uh, and I <laughs> well, let me say this because I'm going to challenge you on some Max Domi stuff today. Sure. Um, isn't it great to have a guy that actually embraces what this is. Yes. When, mm. when CJ's writing an article, and you mentioned this in the LFR, where it's like, oh, I can't think in TD Garden. It's too hard. Oh, I can't play in I Toronto because the media is too hard. Yo, this guy, for the mistakes that he made, and there were a few last yes. night, Knocker. this guy fucking wants to be here. I know. He wants to be here, and he wants to win here, and he gets it. Here's what. Here's my issue with the way sometimes the Leafs tackle the playoffs. They tackle them in a way that is so not intense. You could tell they're engaged, but there isn't that like that boiling point of I'm going to simmer over here. And you need guys on your team that are are, you know, prone to red mist. Nazem Kadri was one There's of them. There's no subtlety to their toughness. Bingo. And no, the, but I'm saying like Marshand is subtle with it. Was uh, the Panthers, not though. Yeah, the early Panthers in his career. know how to be subtle with it. Oh yeah, no, it's something that comes with time. But uh, Kadri would take it, take it, take it, explode, gone. Yes. Bunting would take it, take it, take it, explode, gone. <laughs> and Domi is next up based on last night. I hope he's not. His track record suggests he's not. Mm-hmm. But so my number is give him 12 million, give him three years. The guy deserves to be here. And I think you have found the next guy that should be on Austin Matthews wing full time. That's what I think. I would do that deal. He has to play better than he did last night. Agreed. Now, let's start with this game. OK, so we're going to we're going to start. And this is what we do in the playoffs for anybody that doesn't know. I uh, for the Leafs, I take it period by period. Right. Because I want yeah. to grab. I, I, I think in, in playoff games, there's three games per game. Yeah. And it's how do you play in each period? And then you put all that together. So the first period, the Leafs open with four shots in the first 80 seconds. And then they give up a 2-1-1. And as we mentioned before, John Beecher scores his first shot in the in the in the first game of his playoff career. Un- in the un- first rough. shot of the entire series that Boston registers. How many goals do you have this season? Seven, I think. Yeah. Like in f- oh my god. Seven in fifty-two. There are Get out of my face! Three posts uh for Boston uh against Toronto throughout that period. It could have been worse. Yep. Uh, Domi kind of mixed it up with Charlie McAvoy, gave him a little punch. I don't know what Charlie McAvoy did to get a penalty, but they did get coincidental I, minors. Dude, Domi, for as many uh, times as he was in the box last night, should have been in the box way more. He should have been in the, in the box off the opening faceoff. <laughs> oh, with Marchand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that shit is the shit that I love. And I don't. Oh, yeah. You I didn't show, have a problem with that. Throw me any graphs you want. Throw me any shit that you want about, oh, he's not good or this or that. And I know Jonas Siegel has written an article today saying Marner and Matthews need to be reunited. What I am telling you is this. Stop. I want a what? guy. Yes. He just put it out a couple. Uh, I'm, we are going to get to it. Can we afford? I haven't account? read it. Is it good? I will. Oh, it's Jonas. Jonas. Listen, I love Jonas. Uh, I will disagree with Jonas on this one and I'll read clips from it. Can we afford a new table? Um, I'm gonna don't flip break. Don't break. I'm going to I'm going to stomp you, on it and break. it. I'm going to be honest. You couldn't even if you wanted to. Wow. Whoa. It's a strong it's a, table. It, look at it. <laughs> it's, it's actually like, it's almost it's, pretty, it's pretty almost thick. anchored into the floor. Pretty thick. It's thicker than I thought. <laughs> yeah. <even> <laughs> Matty, pull out. Like you're not. That is actually the, <laughs> that's how thick it is. Yeah. And there's a bottom piece that's just as thick. So. Yeah. I think if I hit it right in the middle, I'd be good. I, I'm actually surprised. <laughs> we need to get Eric point. Young in here and suplex me. Through <laughs> we might kill you. Um, he might. Okay, so. <laughs> but what a pop, though. So you got. EC Dub. EC Dub. <laughs> Sorry. So you got 
you got him going right at Marchand right off the opening face off. And I like that. I want that. Nobody on the Leafs through the entire decade we've been watching this era of the Leafs. This what? Ha- this era e- of the Leafs. Not a single one of them have ever done that. No. And that is enormously, I think, helpful. It takes the scare out of a guy like Brad Marchand. And by the way, he is kind of the boogeyman. The Bruins uh, avoided all that garbage, though. Leafs tried to goad them into it. The Leafs drove physical play. The Bruins, you know, they had a few good play. Maroon, you know, hitting Lilligren into the bench. Yeah. Uh, Robertson nearly died, um, yes, which did. is something I fear for in these Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, really good player, but oh my God. But for the most part, I thought the Leafs were the more physical team. Mm-hmm. They had, I think it was th- 30 plus hits halfway through the game, which is one, you're running around a lot too. You don't have the puck very much. But they were even with Boston the whole way. The hits were even. But and the imagine five on five was in the least favor. Imagine then if when Edmondson steps up to cut a guy off in the offensive zone, Reeves, instead of hitting the guy that Edmondson is already hitting, back checks. <laughs> yes. Is, can we, is, uh, are we there? In Let's the get period? there. Well, it's the first bloody goal. Uh, what do you mean? Are we there? It happened two minutes in. Let's go, Steve or Jesse. Let's let's put it up on the screen. Do you have it? Uh, I can. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure but, sure. you know, and I think I think because I kind of gave the recap of the first period. I think that Edmondson got a lot of shit for that. Sammy got a lot of shit for that. No, Edmondson, I think, was doing his job. What is Reeves doing? Yeah, and I, I think, think this is the biggest fear with Reeves on game number one or even, let's go back to July, July 1st, <laughs> when this signing is made. This is what we didn't want. He's in the playoff lineup. He's he's not thinking about playing the game of hockey. He's thinking about I gotta be tough. He I gotta finish. Joel a Edmondson. Check. He, he hit fi- his own guy. <laughs> he if, right now, if you're listening, there's a there's a picture up on the screen of Ryan Reeves, and in between him and Joel Edmondson is a Boston Bruin. He is smushing two guys, and while he's doing this, the play is going the other way, and John Beecher is going the other way and getting the puck and scoring a goal. This goal doesn't happen if he's playing hockey and decides to back check instead of playing tough guy on the ice and going for a check needlessly. And Jesse, though, counterpoint, how dare you? Ryan Reeves is currently tied for the Leafs lead in scoring. With, uh, he's with an a assist. Point. Yep. Does he have an assist? Yes, yep. he does. Right. He does. That's great. Yeah. You may, I guess he made up for it. <laughs> yeah. It's all... All, All even, <laughs> dude. It's like this. This, like I said, this is my biggest fear with Ryan Reeves in the playoffs, in that he takes away from guys who would be responsible offensively or defensively. You know, and he's just in the corner doing these kinds of things. Yeah, and and this is where you kind of there's the duality of Ryan Reeves because here's the thing: if the Leafs had, if the Leafs go up and they go up four to one, you know Boston's going to get tough and they're going to get mean. And they're going to start punching faces after whistles and stuff. And that's where Ryan Reeves is really kind of important. Um, And he that line has played really well. And I think they were one of the more effective leaf lines last night, which we can get to later. Dude, it's but that was just it's a bad play. And it's early in the game and it's early in the series. Mm -hmm. And it's bloody frustrating because if you're a Leaf fan, you've seen this movie. It's it's the early play and the late play in the periods. They just need a little bit more focus to get started. And, And that. He's 37. Yep. He knows better. Yep. How old's Maroon? The guy they're hitting. Yeah. So so ah! this, the check on Patrick Maroon here, uh, Ryan Reeves, when he comes up, the puck is then as he's hitting Maroon, being fed to I forget the Bruin who starts the breakout breakout. Uh, but uh, is it Boquist or no? I'm not irrelevant. Sure. Fed to the Bruin right there. And all Ryan Reeves needs to do is when he's coming to the play, mind where the puck is and take the puck but he's just blinded to the actual puck and he only wants the check. And I, it's uh, for me, that's unforgivable in the playoffs. I mean, if you're uh, Jim Montgomery and you're a really smart coach, you know exactly what's happening on this shift. Leafs fourth line is out there nice and early. They're going to be running around. Mm-hmm. They're going to be running around. Look for the breakout and away you go. Yeah, it was Boquist. You're right. Yeah. And look at Reeves. Bling. 
Like, <laughs> like, the, like the alert from what is that? Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Oh, uh, like, uh, yeah, it's over. I was I was up early and I was at Starbucks and the guy who was making the coffees. He goes, "Great game last night." And I was like, "It's great if you're a Bruins fan." He goes, "Ryan Reeves." And I'm like, "Yeah," because <laughs> that's that's the first thing he thought of when he when he mentioned the game to me. And I'm like, "Yeah, the dude. He he. It's unforgivable." Oh, uh, so shout out you. I, I, I didn't get his name, but I want to shout him out. Well, and then the coffee this morning. And, and this <laughs> leads to the Sammy conversation. He allows the first goal of uh, both both periods. Of the first two periods. Mm -hmm. First shot um, of both two periods. It's a two like now. Uh oh, uh oh, we're getting into Michael Hutchinson territory where you're like, OK, it's a two on one. Difficult to stop the first shot of the game if it's a two on one. And difficult to stop the puck when Morgan Geeky is taking away your eyes and difficult to make a fucking save. I don't care. Make a fucking save. That's your job. That's the gig. Oh, but this guy, they were there last year. The saves were there last year. They gave up these chances. Mm -hmm. Where'd they go? Every team gives up these chances. Where'd they go a week and a half ago? Where'd they go? Like the Leafs could go neck and neck, blow for blow with the Boston Bruins. And if it comes down to Swayman or Allmark, because apparently they might alternate, the Leafs are just, they have a humiliation kink. It's ridiculous. And the and Bruins could throw out either goalie. And if it's a neck and neck 50 50 game and it comes down to goaltending, ah, it's over. Now, it's over looking, fast. By the way, um, I think that's Boquist there. Uh, um, with the yep. puck, yeah, yeah, with the puck, ne or uh, Lilligren goes for the puck carrier, and well, he go he goes down. Well, no, yeah. but, <clears throat> but he goes down and still misses it. And this is the this is the thing I've always they kind of teach you to pick one, pick one, so the goalie can pick the other. And usually it's the guy without the puck, so the goalie can go one on one. That's usually your best shot. And this this right here is not Lilligren's fault. But what when you're looking at this play, you go, okay, if you're going to commit to the puck carry, you better be sure. Dude. And he's not sure. You, you know what's crazy as someone who didn't grow up playing hockey is like, that's one of the first things I learned about it is on a two-on-one, like pick the guy who pick. doesn't have the yeah. puck. Yeah, just tie him up. Don Cherry was always tie big, him up. big on that. Dude, you never see that though. I know. And I think <laughs> you never because, see it. I think it's because when they get to this level, they can skate so fast and react so quickly that maybe you don't need to. But I can tell you in in, in like younger or in, in smaller levels or whatever, they just say tie up the tie up one guy and then the other guy can, you know, the, the, the goalie can take the puck here. And that's that's I, normally what you do for me. Everybody in the sequence after Ryan Reeves makes the play, I'm forgiving. It's yeah. a two on one. Yeah, it's a, like even Sammy, though. Yeah. I thought at the end of the first period, yeah. the score was one nothing. Yep. So we seem to forget that. Yes. When Austin Matthews hits the post and oh, Swayman's oh. out of the net, the score was one nothing. And if that puck is a couple inches to the to the right, the game is tied one one in the middle of the second. It wasn't like I thought at the end of that first period. I thought Mitch Marner had a great first period. He was on he was on for uh, two minutes of shorthanded play, and there was four minutes of uh, penalties by the Bruins. He was on for half uh, half of the penalty kill time, and I thought he did an exceptional job in the penalty kill and play. And Sammy for all the defensive lapses that the Leafs had, I thought Sammy held his own at the by the end of the first. And from the second onwards, the Leafs kind of blew it as the Bruins opened it up. But if we're doing the first period, I thought at the end of the first period there's nothing wrong with the game it was one little mistake that caused them to be down one nothing and there was a grand opportunity to tie the game one one let's and that's a completely different playoff game if it's one one in the middle of the second so let's have a conversation matthew scores that 99 times out of 100 right yes no no not really it was, I, it was, I thought it was a lot more difficult than people are are um, looking at the play like the dude standing in front of you you got to go around him and he's on his off man. leg and I get yeah. that was, I, I think he of I, I'll say it this way of all the players in the NHL he's got the best shot of making that shot here I, I'll put it this way uh, he makes 11.6 something got to get your fucking number in there million dollars and next year he'll make 13 and a quarter would you pay that for the best goal scorer in hockey yes, yes. yeah you'd, yeah. you'd pay that for a guy who scores 70 almost goals of course you would. What about for a guy who scores 35? Would you pay that for a guy who scores 35? No. No? I believe that's his playoff rate. That's his playoff rate. 
<clears throat> career, 22 goals in 51 games. That is a 82 game rate of 35. So we went on a rant. We huh, look, at, look, look at me. <laughs> Look at me blushing. I did. I went on a rant about Mitch Marner. Uh, I think it was on our most recent podcast. And people were like, how does Matthews escape this criticism? Now, Marner, you know, you mentioned he did a couple things on the PK that were good. PK sucked anyway. Don't care. Offensively. I'm sorry. I just thought if we're doing the end of the first period. The, yeah. Yeah. yeah two fine. Yeah. That's what we were doing. Yeah. Uh, his line was useless. Yeah. Um, John Tavares might have might as well not played. And then they made a super line and that was useless too. Um, he was freaking invisible. He was he didn't have a good game and he makes too much to not have a good game. And But a lot of people were like, where's this energy for Austin Matthews? And I thought about it and I'm like, you know what? Matthews isn't that like he's not invisible. Whatever it is, he's not getting it done. Mm -hmm. We haven't even mentioned that McMahon or Willie weren't in the lineup. Um, am I crazy to say it, it shouldn't matter? What, what is the Leafs' problem year in and year out? We always say toughness, and then they got tougher, but the real answer is scoring. They don't score enough goals. They have next season, when it begins, Marner will be the cheapest of the core four. He'll be making $10.9 million. Tavares will be making 11. Willie will be making, I think it's 11 and a quarter. 11.5, mm -hmm. I thought. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's 11 quarter. And Matthews will be making 13 and a quarter. What on God's green earth do you mean they can't score? 11.5. Ele oh, great. Oh, yeah, good. Totally, yeah. Good. Totally number, yeah. No goals in his final 11 games and then wakes up sore on Thursday. Does, do any of us believe that story? He woke up sore Thursday and the guy misses a game for the first time in eight years because of injury. Do any of us believe that? What happened? What happened? <laughs> what was mismanaged? What happened? Just be honest. You got the conspiracy theory hat on? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, he woke up sore. Okay. I mean, so have I. No one pays me $11 million to play hockey, though. No, but that shows how serious it was. Yeah, yes. the guy hasn't. Yeah, I don't yeah. believe for a moment it was all oh, game eighty two and he woke up sore. No, I don't. Nobody the said, dude has nobody very said, nobody obviously said sucked sore. for like several weeks. Nobody said sore. If it was just sore, he would have played. No, no, he. That's that was the report Jesse, from the league. Go and go and look up the quotes. Go and look up the quotes. You're like, oh yeah, he's just dealing. Oh, and everyone's like, ah, he'll play. He'll play. It was is everyone thought it was like how Max Domi missed uh, the last mm -hmm. couple games, and he's like, ah, I'll be good to go. Yeah. No, you're talking about like the the quotes from Thursday through Saturday where yes, they yes. were, well, that's, that's the Bradshaw living mandates. We're not going to show our hand. Like they, they knew he wasn't going to play and all that. And they didn't want to admit it until game time. Right. Yeah. So and that's a little different. No, no. And like in the playoffs, um, you know, you don't show your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, one, because it's bad strategically Two, What if your hands really stupid? Mm -hmm. What if uh, the way you handle this is embarrassing and suck shit? That's that's what I hope didn't happen. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> yeah, I think so. We're having an entirely different conversation. Win or lose. Win or lose. I mean, they lost 5-1. They died. Um, win or lose, though, if that game is a little closer, it would it would be because of Austin Matthews. Mm -hmm. He has not gotten it done. He has not gotten it done. He so rarely gets it done at this time of year. So do his teammates. And everyone goes, oh, look at his points from last year. All right. Like, what are we doing? To are your, we doing? He scored a goal in game six against Tampa. Mm -hmm. It's a 2 1 win, I think. Mm -hmm. He scored the one. Mm -hmm. uh, no one showed up against Florida, and they died as a result. Like, this isn't complicated. To your point about the Leafs' issues or goal scoring, uh, this is from Chris Johnson, his article on the loss from last night. It's eight straight playoff games. They haven't scored more than two goals. I had, what? I didn't realize I didn't that know at that. all. Didn't know that. They won a series and all that. I guess that. it was 2-1 against Tampa? Yeah. Game six was. Eight straight playoff games. Wow. They haven't scored more than... Like, are you kidding me? On a team that's supposed to be built on offense and defense is where they struggle? No. This team is excellent in the playoffs on defense. Everybody who needs to score goals doesn't show up for this team. Eight straight times. So game one against Boston, 
five games against the Panthers. Yep. Three against. Then the two final against, two. Final two. two against against the Lightning. Yep. It's All they, two or less. It's a wonder they won any games in that stretch. Exactly. It, it is really a is. miracle they are. They two, were where they were. Two goals is not enough to win a game most of the time. You know what's incredible? They only won two of them? In that span? Yeah, game seven and one versus uh, Florida. Mm-hmm. Game four. G- game uh, six against Tampa. They, they, they won. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they won, they won Tampa. And, and I think games. they lost game five. Holy shit! Yeah, team can't score. Team has never been able to score in the playoffs. And like, and like, it doesn't need to be singling out Austin Matthews, but there's four of them. What do you mean? What do you mean they can't score? Oh, the depth has to fuck the depth. Eight straight games, and the max they can score is two. Get another job. Eight. What are we talking about? Can I adjust my Bruins in seven pick? <laughs> Last time the Leafs scored more than two goals in a playoff game, game four against the Lightning. It was five to four in a victory in overtime. So there you go. A game mm. in which they got outplayed. Let me just throw that out there. Mm. Um, they were down 4-1. I, oh, I, my I want to um, I want to say this about it because the, you know, the Bruins come out and they score a goal essentially every seven minutes in the second Shout period. Shout out CJ. Excellent on his job. Yeah, Dude, that's that's a crazy yo. Can they skip game two, three, and four and just no? Because I think we got. I, I think that's. I think that's. Stop. I think part of the reason that they couldn't get it going last night is, and people are going to blame them. The most egregious penalty is the Max Domi one on Brad Marchand, and yeah. I agree. Uh, it was undisciplined. It was Here's, undisciplined, but like Matthews and Bertuzzi can, had equally. Can I be honest? Yeah. Uh, Matthews Bertuzzi and who was the other high sticking call? There was a third one, McCabe. Oh, you already said the Matthews one. Um, uh, I'll tell you. Honestly, next. like yeah, a lot of people McCabe. were ranting about the refs. Uh, the only penalty where I, I didn't was see. like, where I was like, come on, was the Benoit one. Penalties in the game: Benoit hooking, Bertuzzi high sticking, Domi roughing, Matthews high sticking, Domi slashing, McCabe interference. So the McCabe. One of the McCabe ones, um, I think Sheldon Keefe rightly pointed out that that happens like 40 times a game. And I, I just can't remember that. And I couldn't believe it. But the the Matthews high stick and the Bertuzzi high stick. Like, I know the I know the Domi thing is bad. We highlighted he, it. Before but he's also smashing. He's also doing exactly what Brad Marchand does to the Leafs players every series as well. He just got caught. Mm-hmm. The 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 thing about cleaning up your sticks is that it's so easy i don't think if if you look at the five on five minutes last night and there were very few especially in the second period um the leafs did really really well and what i what i think elliot friedman said something really interesting after the game he's like i don't think the bruins were that good no they really weren't he he said they were fine no fine he said i think the leafs just kind of gave it away and i think that they did and that happened a couple years ago i remember there was like a saturday night game where the leafs lost two to one against boston and I, I was like, man, this is the most entertaining game. Now I had had a couple weed gummies. I'm not gonna lie, oh, but I had so much fun. And then, and I, I rolled into work on on Monday when we did the show, and I was like, I was like, you know what though, it was an entertaining game. And you're like, no, Adam didn't even watch the game. They effing high. gave it away. <laughs> they gave it away. I, I'm still watching the game when listen, I'm a little high. It's Saturday I, night. Adam was like, whoa, I'm having a good time. I, listen, I don't wait for my hangover. I don't know if they win or lose. The Leafs <laughs> didn't do that badly if you were on drugs. <laughs> they were great. <laughs> They were great in that game. Go look it up. The deserve to win a meter was for sure in the end. Uh, Steve, the puck moves so fast. Yeah, it's crazy. Man, it was like, really it was like a fast game. It was really pucking. Pucking. The point I'm trying really to make. Pucking. Isn't it crazy how much your face moves? Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, all right, that right. Let's get going. That's good like going with crazy. it. Crazy. <laughs> My um, point is uh, that before you make that point, Tampa registered their first shot on goal for four minutes left in the first period. Yes, and they're already down one nothing. I think, right? Yes. Reinhardt? Yes. First yeah. shot on goal, four minutes left. The win just three. happened. So, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. The win, the win in seven. <laughs> make your point, please. <laughs> um, my point is that this is a winnable series. Yep. Five on mm-hmm. five, it's winnable. But you can't, if Max, if you're gonna slash Marchand across the wrist, which by the way, please keep doing it. Uh, just don't do it when anyone's looking at you. Um, if Off it, the draw. Austin, Tyler, Boyce, sticks down. <laughs> sticks down. I, you don't make yeah. it so the refs have to call it. Now, they always call a tighter game early on, and then later in the series, <laughs> it gets looser. 
Yep. But please don't make it so easy for them. How many high sticks has Matthews taken in his career? The answer is probably less than five. Yeah. But it was an obvious high stick, dude. Yeah. I think I can't get mad about that. Matthews has oh, no, to no. like Matthews is how many times has he done that move where it's like I'm gonna power to the back of the net and get around this guy. Mm. This is the playoffs. You can't be loosey goosey with that move. Well, and Bertuzzi is just uh, completely careless and aloof. Like we highlighted this before the series began, and he did it game one. Yeah. Do you remember when was it? Was it game 82 or game 81 when he hopped behind the goalie? <laughs> Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. That was pretty funny. Like, what are you doing? That was pretty funny. Yeah, but he, he, had, he had an offensive zone high stick in one of the final three games again. Mm -hmm. um, we can't have that. Like, dude, that line that we're like, ah, this line, ah, they barely played together because they all took a turn in the box. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, they were on the penalty kill so much. Uh, Nick Robertson, like, jump scared me in the third period. I'm like, bah! I forgot you were in the game. Like I thought Nick Robertson, his effort level, like for all I don't like I don't think his skill level is there to be like every day NHLer right now, but his effort level is there. If every leaf tried as hard as Nick Robertson, they win the cup. That's a great way to put it. If 100%. every leaf tried as hard as Nick Robertson, yeah. they'd win the cup. They don't. Yeah. Um, that dude's out there motoring. <laughs> like he's got to move his legs so often. Dude, like a little you know a little dog's gotta move their legs really quick. <laughs> Yeah. That's, what, oh, yeah. that's what Nick reminds me of. Yeah. Here's 100%. Here's, here's part of the issue. When they do that little thing where the dog dips their head, so th that that you know they're fucking going. Oh, like, yeah. They're not just running. They're, uh, yeah, Waffles they're, got that in her. Austin, oh. Austin Matthews, five <laughs> shots, 27% in the face-off dot, 48% expected goals. And, and, and by the way, the rest of the team looked really good in terms of the five-on-five five play. If you look at the numbers, and I know the numbers don't tell everything, and they do drive me nuts. I don't want to see that deserve to win a meter ever again. I remember people got mad at me once going, great, I'm so glad they deserve to win, but they lost. In the playoffs a couple years ago, and they're like, you're a fucking idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. And what happened? The Leafs lost. <laughs> I, I think... I want to know how often the meter's right. Oh, I, the I, meter's this, nonsense. The, I'm not looking at the meter, by the way. I'm talking about other other things that that are out there and that meter does not mean anything my point is you got to clean up stuff and this is easy this is easy sticks down um if you're gonna spear someone in the balls make sure nobody sees it like it, you know what i mean like if you're gonna lick someone's face make sure the refs don't see it in the moment brad marchand who's really good at that or just this is stuff sign guys, enough sticks that they don't care that, that yeah that too uh that they can fix this Mm -hmm. You can totally fix this. Yep. And and I'm not saying that they win. You need Sammy to make some saves. Mm -hmm. Yes. You do need Sammy to make some saves. One more but bad my, game. That's it. I, I agree with you. That's it. And he never plays another game. For I tried. Game. I wanted to give them credit for the first period because I think like we need to reevaluate the way we're yelling about the entire game because up until that second goal went in, it was a decent game. Mm -hmm. After that moment when things kind of exploded, Sammy, JT, Marner, like they were useless. Hey, listen, if the sun is too bright and you're just too damn good looking to show off your eyeballs, Shady Rays is the place for you. Hmm. Yes. It'll keep you hot. Obviously, you're going to look great in your Shady Rays. I but have also two, two per. Do you have two per? I have two per. Is that is that because that you use the SDP 50% off deal to get two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses? <laughs> it is actually. Yeah, there yes. you go. Shadyrays.com. Use that promo code SDP 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Here's the thing. 300,000 people have given this five stars. They are durable, they are crystal clear, and they're perfect for all your outdoor adventures. And if you lose them or you sit on them, they'll replace them. Damn. I am a big uh, glasses sitter. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that's a that's a very that's a big dad energy, I feel big like. Big dad yeah. energy. Dad's love of just sitting down on well, the sunglasses and just breaking my, them. Just my butt. Yeah. And yeah. City TV, baby, it's everywhere. You're, 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 you're tired. You're not thinking straight. You sit on your sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Now, here's one that I've, I don't understand how people do this. But people do do this. Have you ever run over your sunglasses, like left them on the hood of your car and somehow run them over? No. I, oh, no. My mom did that a couple of times. She's like, oh, I ran over my sunglasses. <laughs> That's a weird like, thing to do once. <laughs> I know. A couple of times. She did that Damn. more than once? Yeah, but it was always early in the morning because she was an early morning. Like mm -hmm. she'd go to work at like four. Damn, that sounds like Marilyn Dennis needs some shady rays. I agree. I'm a big leave them places. Like I'll leave them at a park on a bench or something. I've left the sunglasses on a golf course. I put them down because like, ah, I don't need them for this shot. And I leave them on the, that tee box. Like it's huh. been, I've left a lot of sunglasses a lot of places. Well, I list why you're foolish, Jesse, because yes, you did need them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish my wedding ring had that kind, that kind of uh, 
protection, as in replacement. Oh, no. <laughs> they don't sell those yet. <laughs> they don't. But exclusively for SDP listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Head to ShadyRays.com and use the code SDP for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 300,000 people. Have you trimmed lately? Uh, not the beard. Maybe a little bit of the neck. Talking about the balls. Oh, mm. oh, gotcha, Jesse. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I'm growing out the playoff beard. Mm. Do, is playoff balls a thing? <laughs> if they should. <laughs> hey, how about this? <laughs> We're figuring it out. Don't have playoff balls. Get manscaped. That's right. That's there right. it is. I thought you were going to go the route of, uh, yeah, you know, back in the day, we used to dye it bleach blonde. No, into a no, 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 no. Nobody wants you to see your playoff balls get manscaped. That's right. Actually, in fact, everybody... No, not everybody wants to see them either, but here's no, the deal. No. Spring cleaning doesn't have to be just about your nether regions. Jesse... You get the full grooming experience with Manscaped Signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit and yeah. Andy Man Electric Face Shaver. You've used this. Yeah, all, all the time. I literally used it was two days ago because I like setting. So I have the the new fancy one where you have the little dial and you can switch it. So I'll go to like 0 0.5 and instead of doing like a razor shave, I'll just take that and go to 0 0.5 in the places where I'd normally do a blade razor. So it's, I love it. Now, remember, it's, awesome. it's waterproof and you get a big spotlight because your junk deserves a spotlight, don't you think? Yeah, and if you're uh, depth enough with a marker, you can make it so that it's like Batman. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Dangle at Manscaped.com. at you. 20% <laughs> off, free shipping, promo code Dangle, D-A-N-G-L-E at Manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pantaloons. This is where I want to bring up Jonas Siegel's article. And yeah. the article is actually titled, and this is from two hours ago, okay. why it's already time for the Maple Leafs to reunite Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews. No, Give it, it to me. Continue. Now, I'll say this. They did reunite them in the last couple of games. And how did they look? <laughs> uh, brutal. And they reunited them. It was Tavares, Matthews, Marner. Mm -hmm. so and the, they did shit. The last few games, if you want to illustrate how poor it went, the entire point of two whole hockey games that they played was to get Austin Matthews a goal. Mitch Marner could not deliver that. Mm -hmm. Uh, the lead, in the first period, shots were five one for the Bruins uh, for the Bruins when Domi, Bertuzzi, and Matthews were on the ice. Obviously, we had the Domi issues uh, with the undisciplined penalty. And and Jonas, who's taken a lot of shit from Leaf fans over his Domi takes early in the season, um, he said this is less about Domi and more about uh, Marner and giving that unit as much juice as possible. So what he's suggesting is a Bertuzzi, Matthews, Marner, because if the Leafs are going to win this series, they're going to need to score, we especially see. that line, even more in the absence of Nylander. Here's my issue with this. And where does Domi go? I guess Domi would go down, would slide down with Tavares and Yarncroft. Just swap them? So... Listen, I don't hate that. It's just that, you know, he's talking about Marner was tied for six among Leafs forwards with 1037 at five on five. Um, and he averaged more than five minutes, five minutes more than that five on five all season. Here's the reason. Uh, we were on the, the PK a lot. Yeah. The other thing is, I think we're, yeah, we're we grossly about, overthinking this. We right. talk about the numbers that these guys make because it is relevant. And yep. at a certain point, I, I hate that we have to qualify. I know. I, I okay. But at a certain point, yep. Matthews has got to drive his own line. Yep. Marner's got to drive his own line. Yep. Nylander's got to drive his own line. Yep. And so does Tavares. Yep. And I'm not letting that guy off the hook. I didn't I, think he was. I didn't think he was bad. He had some shots, whatever. Yeah, but he wasn't like, there for a lot of it, though. Like, I didn't see him impacting anything. Well, he doesn't kill penalties. Yeah. He wasn't. He <laughs> yeah. wasn't I guess because, because of all the penalties, wasn't like around to make enough impact. So yeah. I guess a little uh, was, leeway to Tavares' game. I'd be interested to see what the numbers were. I thought he was their most offensively impactful forward, but uh, they had one goal. So. Well, that would be the fourth line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has fewer points comp. than Ryan Reeves. Yeah. I think How deep into the series will it take the core four to pass Ryan Reeves in scoring? Well, I don't know. Let's just get back well, to this for a second. We're waiting for game two. I think the point is that, um, yeah, listen, it'd be great to have Tavar or uh, Nylander back. Um, and what uh, Jonas is suggesting is Domi, Matthews, Marner, Bertuzzi, Tavares, Nylander when he's back. Uh, Nyes, Holmberg, uh, yeah, Holmberg, Yarncroak, and then Dewar, Kampf, Reeves. And I, and that's no Robertson in the lineup, by the way. Okay. Yeah. I, I look at this and I think I... I'm glad that Mitch and Austin, they were playing well together before Mitch sprained his ankle. I get it. 
I get it. But you make the kind of money, you make drive your own line money. And and that this, we can't, if you put those guys together, here's what happens. Montreal. We all watched the Montreal series. When Tavares went down, what happened? It was they over. sent Deneau out, neutralized mm-hmm. Matthews and Marner. It's their, both of them, their worst playoff performance, both of them. You go look up the points. Terrible. Absolutely brutal. In it, Relative to what they're able to do in the regular season. You, you got to spread this talent out or you got to look at how you spread your dollars out. Yeah, because the whole thing about the money being relevant is if you're paying these guys so much money, there's not enough room because we live in a world where the salary cap exists to go get other pieces who are decent enough to fill the other gaps in the lineup. If these guys make money, they have to make up for the lost money that you can't use to spend on other parts of the lineup. And mm-hmm. we we have to qualify that because people need to understand why we harp on the money so often. Adam, to your point, in that Montreal series, William Nylander, five goals, three assists, eight points. Nice. Second in scoring on the Leafs. You guessed it with six points. Alexander Kerfoot. <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Tied for third in scoring. The world's oldest man, Jason Spezza and Austin Matthews. Um, Spezza had five points. Matthews had five points. Only one of Matthews points was a goal. So where I would just dispute- problem is the problem is the problem is the problem every fucking year. But that's because those two guys were together. You neutralize the line. You neutralize them both. My point to Jonas is and, and to anybody that feels this way is we haven't tried it the other way. We haven't tried them with them split up. Yes. And yes. and 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 I, mm-hmm. I want to talk about how plays develop with the Toronto Maple Leafs because this has driven me crazy for years. I talk about this especially when it comes to playoff time, which is how they make their entries into the other team zone, especially on the playoffs. Back pass, back pass, back pass, whatever. The amount of figure skating that I see from the Toronto Maple Leafs on their breakout Skating that leads to nowhere. Oh, we're going to maintain. It's all a possession game. Maintain possession. You know what I don't see? Urgency to set up a play. Oh, dude. You, you want to know what it's like to have a toddler? Watch the Leafs try to set up in the offensive it's zone. It's a 45 minute, five minute task. Mm-hmm. And you like, know, oh my God. And, and what happens is their feet stop moving. You know what I don't see? And again, I, I understand that there are analytical issues with Domi's game. I never see that guy's feet stop ever. He makes plays quickly. He has a great playmaking ability. So does Marner. He has a very water bug type style. So does Marner. But Marner takes his time and Boston are fast enough. You watched it on the power play last night. They drove the point on the Leafs so hard. They drove Riley and they drove Marner. They As soon as they got the puck, they went, skated directly at them. Yeah. And, and, then it, and then the guy's like, oh. That I, Brandon Carlo goal. Well, you were talking about the power play. The penalty kill. It's five Leafs versus three. Bruins should not come out of the corner with that puck. They do. And if they do, you're dead. You're dead. If they're able to get the puck to the point, you have two uncontested bombs. Mm -hmm. Whoever it is. And it happened to be Carlo. You know one of the three guys down low is going to go to the net. They're already there. Mm Mm-hmm. The it's, Leafs, it's awful. The it's Leafs awful. are not a fast skating team, so it's important that the players who are fast, the Domies and the Marners, make their plays quickly. I'm so tired of hearing what the Leafs aren't. Well, they're not. They're not a fast skating No, team. I know. But, dude, again, the money. What do you mean? Well, what, and, and, but what I you, think it's what I'm talking about is be, play style, though. Let's go to play style here. Marner does take his time getting set up. Yes. Is it working no. in the playoffs? No. Does and, and this is my issue with Marner's game in the playoffs, and I love this player. So I want to I have to qualify that. He he is he he stops driving the net too. This is a guy who can handle the puck better than 99% of the players in the league. Him and Nylander and Matthews, they always are able to come up with the puck. It's crazy. <sighs> Let's stop. Why don't I not yeah. why do I not see this player drive the net? He becomes a perimeter guy in the playoffs and the points disappear. Because he's a fish and you're asking him to climb a tree. He's not a rookie anymore. This is this is what he is. Like, uh, why doesn't he? I don't know. I don't know. I got bored of that question half a decade ago. It's over. He doesn't do that, but he can but, do it. So you got to surround him though with guys who do, and that's why I was such a fan of uh, putting him with Tavares and McMahon. 
Because mm. I thought that accentuated all of their uh, best attributes. Yep. And Nyes is a good replacement for McMahon in that role. The line was useless. Uh, like, it's, you know, it, it it's not one issue. And, and like, are we overanalyzing one game because the Leafs got their ass kicked in game one last year and they ended up winning the series? They beat Tampa 5 nothing the year before and lost the series. Um it just that's the only in, game we have to analyze. I know exactly. Uh in terms of the finer details, the only What if they didn't play poorly? What if they played well? Mm -hmm. At 5 on 5, which we seem to acknowledge. What if they played well and they just made too many stupid mistakes? I think that's exactly what happened. So, you know, what Maybe we're spending too much time on what Marner does and doesn't do uh, and what this player did or didn't do. It comes down to don't take stupid penalty after stupid penalty. Don't miss wide open nets and it'd be nice to get a save. And the power, Steve, the one thing I will, I will add to that, yeah. and this is why I'm bringing this up, is the power play is anemic. Oh, it's been terrible for two months. It's over. And it's over with that. And, and and this is what I don't understand is they make no adjustments. Split it up. They make no adjustments. And the only time Domi got out there, and by the way, I kept saying this when Marner was out, put Domi in his spot. It'll, it'll work. And guess what happened? It did. And the reason that bothers me is because if you put Domi out there, um, at least you're trying something on a five on four. Because what I'm seeing is the same stuff. They take forever to get set up. They can't get set up. Then they have to go back and then they have to get set up. And then there's 50 seconds burned. They get 30 seconds in the Bruins zone. Bruins clear it. PP2 out. I like to see them get creative. Like get get creative in terms of not just changing it up, but when your bench is uh, in the offensive zone, mm -hmm. which I believe in the in second when period? you're on the road would be the second period. Yeah. And when you're at home, you can do it a little more often. Um, start Domi out there. And so the Bruins go, what? And if you really want, you can throw Miner out there. Why not? Hey, put them both out there. Who cares? Two great Nylanders out of the lineup. Like, I, I don't know. Does Yarn Croak need to be out there that bad? Like, no, just, just do. And I thought he was okay, especially for his first game back. Just do stuff that screws him up a little bit because the, the Leafs are agonizingly, painfully easy to read. Now, uh, like I, I know people wanted to rag on the refs. I don't want to rag on the refs. I thought they were fine last night. I mean, uh, I, people I can't want to do this every year. People I want can't. to stuff. Well, also, I don't think that they missed that much, to be no. honest. Um, it, was norm, it was a normal game. Keith, right. Keith, normal game. My my issue with Sheldon Keith is he mixes things up at the worst times. He waits till it's the third period of game seven. And, you know, he does get out coached and he was out coached in Florida last year. Mm -hmm. Um like stuffed into a locker out coached and Jim Montgomery is the best coach in the national hockey league. Him and John Cooper. I, I don't hate Sheldon Keefe. I really don't. Um, but if they like, we've already started the conversation. What happens if they lose the series? I got no appetite for him coming back. I got a question about somebody. I don't think should be back regardless of if they win the Stanley cup or not. And that's Guy Boucher and the power play. Is I he, agree with is, he's so he's the one who runs the power play. He's the one who replaced Spencer Carberry in yeah. the power play role, right? So I just I think there's enough evidence here to know that the power play is awful in the way that it tries to get set up and it can't like at the end of the game before they pull the goalie with like 20 seconds left to go in the power play. The reason they couldn't pull the goalie is because the power play couldn't get in the zone. Oh. They spent they spent a minute and 40 seconds trying to get the puck in the in the offensive zone for like 10 seconds so that Sammy could go to the bench. Pull and, they, and they couldn't do it. Just pull him. And so then I, you have six guys at least for God. Sick. I think oh, I was been, losing my mind on the stream. There's been 83 games now of evidence to know that he's not good at the power play at, at controlling this power play. Who the or, hell runs the penalty kill or the guy uh, the penalty Chenoweth. kill? Is Chenoweth is in charge still? Yeah. Um, it wasn't just, this bad last year, though. I think it? you need somebody else in there running this thing. It sucks. Yeah. Um, and the, there's too much talent for it to suck. Yeah. I, I don't. Again, I've been saying it forever with this. The, the shorthanded. They play deep. You got yeah. four guys down low below the hash marks. You have enough skater. Now, I know Yarn Croak wasn't in the lineup, and I know Marner was in the lineup. Yeah. So I understand that there's there's a, a, a talent differential there. But even early on in the season, the penalty kill still sucked. And we, why are we not 
if with those guys skating ability, why are you not pressuring high? How about this, Adam? They play deep. Well, that must mean they're a really good net front defense. Team. Terrible. They don't tie anybody so up. What the? F what's the point of any of it? Oh, they're agonizing to watch sometimes. Agonizing. Now, a lot that being said, I can't wait for game two. For for just to go back on what you were saying, Sheldon Keith, he's done. If they lose, yeah. if they li listen, a lot of conversations change if they win. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. But no, if they lose in the first round again, I got no appetite for it. No appetite for it. I'm sure he'll go somewhere else and he'll have some success. Uh, they lose. I got no appetite. And for context, anybody, PP finished seventh in the league, which is like, oh, decent. But I've seen how it plays of late. I saw it played against the Boston Bruins. It's unacceptable. The it, penalty kill, 23rd. Terrible. It turns into a pumpkin with about 15 games to go every year. Yeah, yeah, it does. That last half of the year, it the does. power play. I don't Every year. And people will say, well, you got to take it on hold. Like, no, I don't. No. Actually, I need to take it for the when last When the games time. matter, it sucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> long and short of it. Yeah. When I, it's time to show up, this part of the game sucks. I'm so unacceptable. sick of going, yeah, but with this team. <laughs> How about, yeah, but they lose when it matters all the time. And it's exhausting, actually. But when they win, it's been one game. Yeah. Last uh, year against yeah. Tampa, it was terrible game one. They're, like you said, they played pretty well. It's just they made a lot of bonehead decisions. Get those out of there. You know, play a little better. Uh, sneak the puck, puck past Swayman. Let it go in. Make it 1-1. Maybe the series is uh, goes in least favor. Do you want my prediction for game two? Mm -hmm. They're going to shock us with how much better it is. Yeah. They're going to shock us Good. with how much better it is. I would love that. I would love that. How many times do I make a bold prediction where it's the Leafs doing well? Not often. And how many times do I make that bold prediction? And they actually do. Not often. You rotten sons of guns. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to... If you don't... Ooh, if you don't pull this off in game two after I just said that, <sighs> Adam, hold me back. <laughs> Steve, Steve, hold me back. I, think you're, I swear. You're really swear. only good at predicting the Leafs' downfall, yeah. to be honest. So. Yeah. yeah, because um, it is easier to see than the sun. Uh, you want the actual numbers for, hey, the power play sucks when things matter? Let's go. Since March 1st, yep. the Leafs' power play, 29th. Yo, <laughs> they finished oh, seventh. You're, you're, you're toast. You're gone. You, they you, finished seventh throughout the whole year, and since March first, it's been 29th. Yo, look at this drop. Okay, Blue Jackets 15.9, Islanders 15.2, Gaglunk. The Leafs 12.5, and then beneath them is just the Ducks, <laughs> Habs, and Flyers. Wow. None of those teams made the playoffs. That's rough. Um. Good Lord. That's terrible. Here, like, Jesse. Here. What, for what fun. Do what do you want? For fun. Yeah. What was it last year? Uh, I can do some digging if you want. Last year from March 1st onward. Give me a sec. Uh, in the year before. I got the year before. Because I know twenty the 2021-2022 season, we were complaining about the same thing. You want Mar same date, March 1st? Yeah. Uh, till end of season. Bring it up. Bring March it up. March 1st to end of season. Matty, you can bring this up now. Where are the Leafs? Fifth. Oh! I know. Your, your memory's wrong on that Look one. You. Okay, but do the season before. So last year, <laughs> it was good, and they won. Last year, it was good, and they won. Yep. Right? Carberry. Do the season before. Year. You want 21-22 now. Yes. March 1st. Where I don't believe it was good. All right. March 1st. Till well, what was the season? season? Remember where they didn't score for like two months? Yeah. It was, it was March 1st till end of season in 20... They were 11th? Two is 11th. 11th. Okay. So that's yeah. Right. All right. So I'm just wrong. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> this season is like... The, it's, it's awful. It's yeah. there. We see it. Yeah. And I think you can only replace the assistants so many times. Mm. Um, and they've done that a few times under Keefe. And I know that he was signed to a two-year extension. So the fly in your ointment, sir is if they did lose the series and they wanted to get rid of Keefe, the MLSE board might be like, but there's two years left. <laughs> yeah, but it's Rogers, so maybe they just don't honor his contract. So. Um, the uh, the uh, the end of the day, here's what you need to take away. Clean up the penalties. Stop being super sluggish on your breakouts. Mm -hmm. You can be faster than that. Mm -hmm. uh, we need the, the big three, because no Nylander there, mm -hmm. uh, to not be invisible for most of the game. And that means staying out of the box. And then, of course, you got to do whatever you can to William Nylander to get him back on the ice. 
<laughs> I don't. You got to get them in the. You got to get them in the. What? <laughs> you can't like. You got to play. You can't uh, make medical miracles happen. Okay. The <laughs> conversation. <laughs> like, what if his leg is broken? <laughs> like, the I don't conversation. Think that's it. I think he woke up sore. <laughs> the conversation. If the Leafs lose this series surrounding William Nylander, oh, it's going to be insufferable. Is going to be exhausting. Yeah. Do, remember, we were like, oh, man, oh no one's going to play those two games in Florida. Everyone played all of them. Except, except for the D. Yeah. Because they have 12 of them anyway. So they just rotated them. So, and again, why? So they kept going, well, we only have 12 healthy forwards. We only have 12 healthy. Why? Mm. the cap oh, mm. the cap why is your cap so fucked why is it? <gasps> is it the same reason that it's fucked every fucking year four guys make a lot of money oh my god yeah well we should try it again steve do you think i should trade john tavares in the stream tonight go for it okay if he accepts a trade go for it you got lucas raymond last time <laughs> all right do it <laughs> I don't know. That seems like the solution to fix the league. Well, yeah. Get rid of the core four. I don't want to talk end of season. Let's just talk. Yeah, season. we got. No, that, I know. And that, so, that's what bothered me about the end of your stream last night. You started doing like, oh, if they lose questions. It's you therapy, know? though. And, but like you have we have four months for that. No, but it's it's here's how much it means. Mm -hmm. Here's how much it means. It means more. I mean, last year it meant a lot, obviously. Uh, this year it means even more. We got four months. That's in. No, that's Jesse. Why are you lying to me? In a no. week. <laughs> no, that's in, not true. The draft week. is sooner than that. Okay. In a week, you'll have two months. Is, is that better? Eight uh, weeks? No. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> no. By next Saturday, we can, next Sunday when we're in here, we could have this conversation. <laughs> next Sunday, hopefully it's off. Uh, I hope the Leafs close it out. I'm so, in could, Boston could be the other way it, it 100% could anything there, could happen I, I want to say uh, uh, last time the Leafs lost to the Bruins in the playoffs Bruins went on to play the Lightning uh, no it couldn't have been because it was 2019 there was a year where the Bruins uh, beat the Leafs they went on to play the Lightning the Bruins won the first game and then they got reverse swept mm. after that happens happens last year bruins uh beat the florida panthers uh three straight games and then or no was it three one three one three one after four and then they lose three straight games and like killed them yeah it was, like was it, it close it didn't look like it was going to be close in florida the freaking one florida panthers were an ot goal away from being eliminated they won that they won that fifth game in overtime underratedly and, with the bruins they blow three one series leads all the time actually <laughs> like a lot nobody like remembers often, that <laughs> but no one remembers it because two of them three of them no two of them are against the leafs and the bruins won anyway and i shouldn't even say they were an ot goal away from losing they scored to force overtime in the last minute did they not no that was the panthers yeah that's what i'm saying yeah the panthers, the, the panthers against the bruins they they, it, and it was a terrible goal oh yeah oh and that's how close God. they were to being eliminated they fight oh. all the way back go to the stanley cup final anything can happen it's game one oh. leafs at least will be fine if, i if i think if they play ass. if they play five on five they'll be great yeah uh what we have learned is that they're bad at both uh i i would prefer the bruins don't take any penalties actually I hope the refs are bad. I'm hoping for that because if they put them on the power play, that's when things go wrong. <laughs> so, so please, referees, call nothing on the Bruins for the rest of the series and nothing on the Leafs. That'd be great. Jake friggin' DeBrusque. Now, moving on to a game that was, listen, <laughs> if you enjoy a defensive battle, the Isles and Hurricanes gave you so much defense. But, it was an exciting game at some really important points. And a couple former leaves making a uh, a big uh, big statement. Stefan Nosen or Nason. Nason. Nason yeah. uh, Freddie Anderson yep. uh, had a great game. Yep. Um, and uh, we we got to see the Evgeny Kuznetsov to start. Oh, boy. Love seeing the album. If I was an Islanders fan, I'd be losing my mind. Because he scores the first goal of the series on a power play. That was a divey McDive dive. Yeah, that was a an yeah. enormous dive. Did you see Tim Stutzlow's on the ice? Hey! <laughs> Whoa! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Tim Stutzlow's not in the playoffs. Sends game. catching Come strays on. for no good reason. Oh! oh, oh, oh. No, I <laughs> thought that give, it was. Give the guy who dove some credit. At least he's played in the playoffs. Whoa! <laughs> it was. Whoa. Uh, I didn't get his coach fired, Whoa. but like, along with the rest of them. It was a little bit of bullshit that first goal because, like, the, the pretty obvious dive, nobody goes down that. 
that easy. And then the Canes ended up scoring on this, on the power play. You don't use these up in game one. No. I will say, like, okay, they're up 1-0 in the series. Remember we talked about, like, Rod Brindamore and the refs being like, yeah, I don't care for you or your hockey team. You think they're going to get a call in game two? It's going to be tough. I uh, that's a, it's, a, it's a horrible dive. I think a really that, bad dive. I, I do think that yeah. I think Steve has a point there. I don't think, um, I don't think the Islanders are going to have a penalty called against them next yeah. game. After refs shit like that. Refs hate that shit. Refs biggest flaws are they're humans. Um, and you know I want to say as much as um, uh, the I think the Islanders played Carolina extremely well that entire game. That's a game where you go. Shit, that just happens sometimes. I mean, if the Canes sweep them, it's going to be close. <laughs> Isn't that what Rod Brindamore said again? I just up? like needling them. Um, I like needling the Hurricanes. So there's, some, some people took that a little too personally. There's two ways I look at that game. And I say, okay, the Islanders played a perfect game of hockey. They played exceptional. They got all of the shots they needed to pepper. They they held the Canes back enough, you know, th- limiting them to one to three on the power play is pretty good for the Canes, who had one of the best power plays in the entire league. And it still wasn't enough to win. Yeah. So it's either, concerning. <laughs> I look at that and I say, okay, if they play perfect and they still can't win, they're doomed. Or I say, damn, the Islanders played them tough. Yeah. If they just get a couple more bounces... There, they can take this series, and I do, I'm sitting on the fence right now because I don't know who to believe is the better team. You here, Carolina got to win. York. You got to win at least one on the road. If you think so? If yeah. Got, well, obviously, yeah. Um, you know, uh, if if this series is tied, going back to Long Island, on Long Island, um, in <laughs> in no in the on of Long. Hey, I, you ever been? I, on, you in. ever been on Jamaica? You know what's crazy? Long Island. I'm going to on Britain. I'm going to. All right. Adam. We've done this. No. Sorry. We're not doing this. How dare you? This early in the playoffs? Yeah, just right. setting us all on fire. You're right. Carolina. Right. Very good hockey team. Very good hockey team. Very good hockey team could easily win the series. I wouldn't be shocked in the slightest, mm-hmm. even though I didn't pick them. Which, which side are you sitting on? That the Islanders played a perfect brand of hockey, still can't beat them. Carolina's unstoppable. Or a couple more bounces go the Islanders way and they can win it. It's the Stanley Cup playoffs. The second one. The second one, all these teams are closer than you think. Hmm. I like the Islanders a lot. I know I picked Carolina, but I really do like there was a reason I picked them to finish third. I love those guys. I think that's a especially with Patrick Waugh there. Hey, did you see uh, his reaction when the second goal went in? No, just, just very quietly kicked the bench. <laughs> yeah, there's Patrick. You know, he's just seething. Oh. Uh, we haven't seen a Patrick Waugh blow up this year, like to like the point where it's, you know, vintage Patrick Waugh. But I feel like if it's going to happen. That dude just happening. vibrates with anger. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like uh, Kyle Lowry with the Raptors. He played better angry. There was a Wah when he was head coach of the Avalanche. He was in town. Mm-hmm. And I was, I want to say I was in the dressing room to talk to someone else. This was morning skate. Mm-hmm. And I didn't get to his media availability and, until I was too late for it. But I got there just in time for him to walk out of the scrum and like brush past me. Oh, okay. And there was just an energy of, holy shit, he's not happy today. And like, he like sort of stormed out of it. Like it, I remember it ended really abruptly. Then every reporter there had a, had an air of, sorry, Pat, sorry, Patrick, sorry, Patrick. Like, he's just a terrifying guy. Just on the edge. He's just a really scary guy. I like guy. that. Yeah. I like that. Uh, credit to the Hurricanes and picking up Kuznets off. I think he was the best player on the ice. Uh, last night, like having just having that as a like free acquisition at the deadline, unbelievable. Didn't forget how to play hockey, right? <laughs> and forget. if you watch that, uh, the game winner and that that second goal, um, like the ability of the Canes to keep that the puck in the zone and a relentless forecheck, like they are they're humming right now. A dude who does a caca bird celly after a goal, being on the Hurricanes, yeah. <laughs> makes so much sense, and we should have seen it coming. <laughs> We should have seen he it. He doesn't though. even play in Washington anymore. What's he doing? <laughs> it's crazy they're both in the playoffs. Yeah. After all that. Right? Yeah. No, it's uh it's actually a really, really good fit. That game's coming up uh, I think at three o'clock, Rangers, uh Washington. Oh man, gonna that's be gonna one. be fun. Yeah. Gonna be a fun game. I uh uh I wanna ask you guys about some of the games tonight. Um so obviously we've got the Florida Bowl happening. Uh, you're talking about Rangers Capitals. Uh we got a lot of shit. For from Jets fans about the Jets in the previews, 
uh, people thinking that we're underrating them, and I don't know why. Two of us picked them. What I know. About? I know. I I just I I picked Avs because of the experience and because. Or did, Steve, who did you pick? I picked. I picked the Jets. Yeah, yeah two of us Six, picked. I think picked uh, I Winnipeg. Maybe yeah. they're just mad at me. But I want to know. I don't know. I want to know this. You know, two is bigger than one, eh? <laughs> All right. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't see. What you um, back? Jeez. Uh, the. Uh, if the Avalanche are going to beat the Jets, especially now, I wish I'd freaking known that Drew Ann wasn't playing <laughs> oh, when well. we made that preview. Like, yeah, great. Okay, cool. Thank yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Um, if without him, fourth leading scorer on the team, by the way, uh, a career high in points too. Incredible. Six. Um, without him there, what then do you do? Because that this changes the whole thing for me. I thought uh, the Avs and Jets were closer than people uh, were giving them credit for anyway. I mean, the Jets are always going to be hard to score against. Mm-hmm. The thing is they got deeper offensively in the offseason and then they did it again at the trade deadline and ahead of the trade deadline. And this takes away from the Avalanche's depth. Um, and he's such a dynamic you know, playmaking forward. Uh, it's really... Listen... They got some crazy high-end talent. I just have a really hard time seeing the Avs pulling this off. Uh, the Jets are too cool. In any series that Nathan McKinnon is in, except for maybe an Edmonton series, he's going to be the best player on the ice. But unfortunately, with hockey, it's not a one-man game. McKinnon played McDavid in the playoffs once, and McKinnon swept him. Yes. That's going to go ahead. And- yes, on his on his way to a Stanley Cup. Yeah, his way yeah. to a Stanley Rant- Cup. Um, and the thing is, people discount Rantanen too right he, oh yeah uh, he's so unbelievably good that's a hundred point player oh that's yeah but one of the best robins in the league yeah nathan mckinnon himself and even if it's one two and ranton and you got to be able to run four lines you got to be able to have a solid defense and you got to like the main thing here for me is they have no goaltending yeah i don't trust the i don't trust and noonan or like they're the starter like georgiev uh, georgiev um who's yeah he lo- I lost played a lot of minutes for a second there a lot of minutes um i trust hellebuck i trust connor hellebuck in this series and if we're if we're we're looking at it like that, and I also trust the Jets' defense. I think the Jets are going to take it. They've also been like really hot coming into the playoffs. Like they played well down the stretch. Mm-hmm. It's not a great matchup for the yeah. Avs, and the Avs have struggled. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I look at this and I say Jets are going to take it. And if we're talking about feedback from the videos, I didn't see the feedback on the Winnipeg thing. But one thing I got to <laughs> correct, and I got to apologize to Hurricanes fans. I did see I called Jalen Chatfield a 21 year old in the video. He's 27. Uh, my bad. I was about to say, I don't even know if he was 21 when he was... <laughs> wasn't he on the Canucks? <laughs> hey, I, I sat next to you and said it. And you said nothing. I know. I, I'll be honest. <laughs> I, I knew know most players' wrong. ages. I just wanted to fuck you. <laughs> I know a range, but I don't know their ages all the time. Um, okay, the other one I wanted to... We did talk about the Predators, Canucks, and the big story. Um, uh, that series for me is down to can the Canucks light the Predators up or not? Is UC hmm. Soros going to let them score three or four goals? I think the atmosphere matters too. Like wh- when we oh Vancouver's going to oh explode yeah explode tonight oh yeah when when we were talking about um you know oh the Preds are going to have like someone who never scores score a goal for them like that's if things go well for them I see uh, that building going ballistic early and I think it's going to be J T Miller. Is there a world where we can get an Evgeny Kuznetsov versus the Capitals? No. second round no but it'd be cool wouldn't it be cool yeah so there's no way that washington wins yeah but, series. No, but yeah but anybody could win anything like mm-hmm. i would think back to columbus being tampa yeah and all that stuff like anybody can beat anybody it's just very unlikely would you be surprised yes yeah i'm surprised <laughs> yes. adam would you be surprised i would be very i would say that that would be more consequential for the rangers than the leafs losing to boston Oh, you can't oh. you can't lose to a team 30 points your junior. They would and they would go hamster Huey and the gooey kablooey. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like that would be, mm-hmm. you know, and that, you know, the ownership group there is not known for being measured. So oh. I think that oh. you're you're not going to be through. That's and by the way, the Knicks are in. So he's not paying attention to the Rangers. But, no, uh, I don't um, even know if. Yeah, <laughs> he, I don't even know if, if Dolan knows that the, the Rangers are in the playoffs. You know, the best thing for the Rangers <laughs> is the Knicks going deep. <laughs> the Knicks, like nobody the pays Knicks attention. Looks so much fun right now. Yeah. The way they, they handled the Sixers in like a comeback victory on Saturday. And then all of the fans outside of MSG just going friggin ballistic. Yeah. What's his New York's so James Dolan? James Dolan. James Dolan. Dude, his list of priorities. <laughs> the Knicks, his band. Fighting with Knicks alumni, the Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Like, um, yeah. I'm going to, I wasn't going to do it today and we're not going to do it today because I knew that we'd have playoff stuff. But at some point uh, during this, you know, next month or two, 
uh, we are going to do a breakdown of the Murello press conference. Um, we have to. Sure. Uh, it's just there was too much to talk about today. Um, I want to deep dive it. I'm Tuesday? Like, yeah, maybe t- maybe Tuesday. because we we And I'll save it for the back half of the show because obviously we want to talk about the playoff stuff at the beginning. But there was so much from that. Mm. Uh, and I don't want to make any comments on it now. But there was so much from that that leads me to believe that the NHL will go back to Arizona and will not go back under this ownership group. Dude, yeah. first of all, I 100% agree for you. Second of all, the press conference went so poorly, it's difficult to believe that it wasn't done on purpose to make Morello look bad. Hmm. But like make him look bad as in here, stupid, speak into a microphone. That is like an excellent conspiracy theory. Oh, dude, Gary. Wow, Gary. I didn't even think about it like that. Gary, <laughs> Gary, well played. Gary. L- look at me, your PR staff. All right, they work for me now. All you got to do, the Gary Bettman uh, image rehabilitation tour, every single press conference you do, you do it next to an owner. That's it. No, you you might honestly be on something. Parade this guy oh, out there. Oh, I'm on there. something. <laughs> Parade this guy out there so everybody sees why this failed. It, it, and the subtext is That's very clearly. The, to me, the subtext was get a load of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm working well, with? Gary Damn. tried to save him. D- get, Gary tried to no, save him. He's, he's no, got to play he that role. Not. No, he is not. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, we'll break it down. Gary, I, wants- I, I, I thought we were, weren't doing right, this. Right, I, I do thought it. we weren't doing this. It's a good tease. It's a damn good tease. I thought we weren't doing this. No, that's, I think <laughs> no. Here, I'll just I'll just say this. There, let me do it. That <laughs> Gary wants Arizona. Gary wants Alex Morello like he wants a chest infection. Hey, who chose Alex Morello? Gary Batman, and he regrets it every day. I leave when you with he that. Wakes up and looks in the mirror. Uh, press conference time. Sure. <laughs> sure. SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, Steve, you mentioned like a couple seconds ago, uh, the atmosphere. And now atmosphere in Vancouver is going to matter. One thing we heard from people down at TD Garden is the atmosphere was electric. And a part of the atmosphere being electric was the Boston fans chanting USA (laughs) in the arena. It came through on the broadcast even. You can hear it. And it was a big thing on social media. Some people hated it. Um, I wanted to pull up one tweet from a Boston reporter. I'll pull that up while you guys discuss it. But I thought it was objectively hilarious. That's a great That's chant funny. from a Boston crowd. Yeah, I mean, it's just a one brain cell <laughs> chirp. <laughs> we're from, it, okay, instead of USA, just do we're from here. We're from here. Because that's all it is. That's I all don't know. It is. I thought it was funny. And you know, I, uh, the reason I think it's funny is because we've been there in the playoffs. Yeah. And we know, listen, Boston fans, and, and you deserve this, uh, because they've won so many championships, they're like yeah. used to winning. Yeah. And so they're having a good time. Whereas Leaf fans, Toronto fans are not used to winning anything and they're not having a good oh, time. Listen, Leaf fans do not enjoy watching. If I was from Boston and my living with sports, you couldn't tell me shit. Yeah. So I thought it was funny. Hey, you know what you should do? Uh, you know what I should do is ignore you and you go fuck yourself. Uh, how about that? If I was from Boston, see, when you're Toronto, uh, when you're from Toronto, you got to take feedback. <laughs> Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's true. Now, stuff does not go well for us, generally speaking. Um, if I was from Boston, I'd be chanting USA. I'd be doing whatever. Totally. Dude, the camera just kept going to like Bruins fans dancing in the aisles. And I'm like, oh, they always look like they're having so much fun. It must be fun to win. It must be. It, it must be. be. Uh, one day I'd love to see that. Happen. This was from Jimmy Murphy. Uh, who writes for Boston Hockey Now, who I follow for like Bruins news on Twitter. Uh, Murphy said, really, Bruins fans, USA chant, check your roster. Eight Canadians and 13 players not from the USA. Be better because you are. Yeah. And let me take a look at that ratio. Yeah, it's a bad tweet. Hey, um, (laughs) where's the team from? Where are the fans from? Boston, we're from here. We're from here. I don't know. I thought it was from here. I, I, 
Can't they? I don't know. I've always found Boston Bruins fans to be a riot. Like they're they are fun. You have to have to have to see a hockey game in Boston. It's the best. It's one of those like you have to see a game in Montreal. Yeah. You got to see a game in Boston. You got to see a game in Nashville. I, like they're just it's so fun. The I don't know, man. I saw. What are um, we, why are we taking this seriously? I don't know. I, I saw the. I think it was the Winter Classic, um, at Gillette Stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruins and Habs. If I'm not mistaken, the Habs killed them. Uh, but the lead up to that game, oh, there's just nothing better. It's so good. Mm -hmm. I've seen the Leafs win there. I've seen the Leafs lose there. Um, it's a great, great place to watch hockey. And like, like I'll, I'll, I'll give you like a few interactions that I saw and experienced that just make me go, God, that's the most Boston thing in the entire world. Um, after a game, can't remember if the Leafs won or lost. I, I think they won. Uh, it was the game where uh, Kadri scored a nasty shootout goal against Tim Thomas, mm -hmm. James Reimer, uh, in an unlikely run to try to make the playoffs. He makes the save, and he's like, his glove is shaking. He's looking up. Um, I was wearing a Leaf jersey. There was a dude in a Bruins jersey. I'm going into the bathroom. He's coming out. And he intentionally stepped in my way. And then he intentionally stepped in my way again when I tried to go around him. And... <laughs> And I'm like, I'm in my early 20s. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to have to get into a fight or something. And then he just, after he did it the second time, he smiles, pats me on the back and just. Walks, yeah. And just walk. Well, away. you remember we when we were there uh, with Air Canada, um, you. The, All these guys were trying to get us to chirp them. They were trying. The guys were, sitting in front of us. Yeah. And then. And then and like, when the it was Leafs like, are losing by like five goals. Freddie, like, what you Freddie had the worst. Again, again, I say the worst game. Freddie had like six of those yeah. uh, in two series yeah. against Boston, and uh, they by the end of the game they were like, "Can we get you, get you like a beer?" Like, <laughs> well, the guys behind us—they were great. They uh, were amazing. Got us a beer. Or, yeah, I, I don't even remember how many games have I seen in freaking Boston. Um, yeah, no, they're just <laughs> we. So we were sitting pretty low, uh, um, and. Uh, you know, everyone next to us uh, and around us was generally pretty welcoming. And the one guy behind us got us a beer. I go, what if we were sitting up there? He's like, oh, you get your ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that made me laugh. Jesse, go ahead. This question comes from Doug on Discord. The Leafs will likely start with Sammy. But how do you feel if they end up going to wall by game three or four? I ask because Hurricanes won a cup with rookie Ward. Penguins won two cups with rookie Murray. Blues won a cup with rookie Bennington. Uh, the rule is two. It's two. Um, what does that mean? Uh, Martin Gerber played two games, and then they went to Cam Ward, if mm. I remember correct. Um, Sammy is very clearly not the better goalie um, in game two, or just doesn't provide them with a save when they could have used one. Um, you got to go to wool. Well, Steve did wool instill confident. No, <laughs> but he's a different person, which is maybe all they need after game three. Do you think the hurricanes were like, fuck? Yeah, we're about to win the cup with cam ward. <laughs> no. no, no, they were not. But they, um, th but then every season after that for 10 years, they said that. Yes. Yes. Cam ward yes. run ran that one playoff run for 10 years. It yeah. They, they won a cup with them and you could argue they would have won more. <laughs> had they not got Had cam them. ward. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know if the Penguins were like, yeah, we're going to take Marc-Andre Fleury out and we're going to go with the kid from the Sioux. Can I show you a uh, can I can I uh, can I tell you a, a stat? Sure. Uh, the Leafs once selected a goaltender named Ian Scott. Uh huh. Fourth oh. round, 110th overall. Yeah, he was he was going to be a good goalie, a WHL goalie of the year, and he got a hip injury, had to retire. Jesse and Steve named the player selected right after him. Uh, Jeremy Swayman. Hey, <laughs> it's Gosh hard to pick goalies. Darn. It's hard to pick goalies, but just poetic. And to think there might have been a Bruin scout when the Leafs made that pick. Who went? Ah, shit! All right, get the kid from Alaska. Yeah, damn it. Um, Allmark, former Saber. Yeah, and somebody put together the All Sabers former Sabers playoff team, like oh, guys who, who used to be on the Sabers who are currently in the playoffs, oh. and that team might win a couple rounds. It was really good. Well, Sam Reinhart, Eichel, Middlestat, Middlestat, Allmark, and Net. Uh, who, who would be on their defense? Not Risto because he's in Philly. Oh, oh boy, their defense is tough. <laughs> Oh, Ilya Labushkin. Okay, Bush. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. The All Sabres playoff team. This is amazing. Uh, oh, I don't think I favorited the team. Ah. So I don't have I wanted to pull it up, but wouldn't be that's okay. Um, oh, Dmitry Kulikov. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're lacking on D, but you have all mark and net. You have a lot of offensive weapons. They'd be decent. Yeah. Um. Last question, Adam. You're probably not. You're probably gonna say I'm not prepared for this. I want to do research, but maybe you can bring it on Tuesday. Okay. Hey boys, question for Adam Wild. All right, let's go. I've always been a fan of history, and I was wondering if you could give us Adam's quick, off the cuff synopsis of. The sacking of the Library of Alexandria. Oh, God. And what its loss meant to the development of early civilizations. Okay, so um, here's here's an issue that we, we have. Anytime in history where you have a group of people burning books, don't be on that side. <laughs> okay? That just don't. That's where you don't, you don't it's the wrong side. So um, there was, and I... Uh, when when the Roman Empire became Christian, there were, if I'm not mistaken, eight popes at once. The Pope in Rome is not, he's just the Pope that survived. Um, there was a Pope in Rome. There was a Pope in Constantinople. That? There was a Pope in uh, Alexandria. There this were, is news? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. I, listen, there, there's so much about Christianity that would blow your mind. It's it's crazy. I don't think it is news. And they used to... It's they news used to, to us. They used to have No, councils. this is breaking news. So they used to meet. Here, keep listening. Pope and Hamilton. Yeah, Pope and Hamilton. Uh, Pope uh, Burlington. Steve, Pope, Steve. Steve. Pope, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pope Stevicus. Yeah. Um, of Ajax. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ajax, which was an, a name from, from way back. Um, See the Pope on a go train. The point I'm trying to say is that... that there was an enormous shift in the Roman Empire to Christianity. And Christianity, it became almost a race, the way I perceive it anyway, it became almost a race to the bottom for piety. There were popes that used to, one of the popes from Rome used to, he threw himself into a thorn bush to show that, to to deliver himself from temptation because he found a woman attractive. Crazy, stupid shit. Uh, and, and, And listen, there are religious people that would think that that's a good idea. Now, wait. I bet he wasn't horny anymore. <laughs> but he was thorny. He's thorny. Hey, oh, hey, let's up go. Here, up here. Uh, let's gotta, go. So that was good. I got to give you that. Hey, so, ooh. so, and I, I, I'm fog- foggy on the details, but essentially what happens is there's a Christian riot in, in Alexandria and it's against, it's probably Christians against Christians, if I'm not mistaken, but they they want to burn anything that is perceived to lead you away from God. These are you got to remember in these situations too. These are inherently good people who are just about as intelligent as people today are. They don't have the depth of knowledge that people of today do, but we have the tendency to look back on people from 2000 years ago and though they are stupider than us. Actually, if they'd been raised the same way we were, their brains are the same. Yeah, what if imagine your whole life just no one told you things? Hmm. Right. And you didn't have the internet to look them up. Yeah. Or you you had your local uh friar or priest and they were the they were the fountain of knowledge, hey, right? Uh Sp- Spartacles. <laughs> Who was the guy in that uh play we saw at the Colosseum the other day? Mm-hmm. Oh, let me just uh <laughs> Yeah, right? <laughs> no, you had to sit there and figure out who that guy was. Right. So the um, you know, Alexandria being one of the centers of learning in the Roman Empire, one of the great centers of knowledge, they had um, a bunch of people there. And, and the, the way that you pass knowledge down was you literally had these scrolls and they were made of papyrus and papyrus rots. And so you had people, their entire lives were spent recopying old papyrus before it went out to keep the library populated. Not only does the oil on your fingers wreck some of the papyrus, but also just age. So that's how they kept knowledge going. Jeez. And you got to remember that at this time, maybe five, maybe 3% of the, the population can even read. So it's like a crazy, it's a crazy thing. And so, uh, so they, you know, this, this riot happens, uh, they burn the library, they lose most things. And you're talking about stuff that Alexander, uh, Alexander the Great, Five, six, seven hundred years before that, when he founded the city of Alexandria, uh, would have brought with him from his conquest through, you know, uh, what is now Turkey, Syria, Palestine, all the way to India. He went all the way through to India. That's how far this fucking guy went. Yeah. And then the the Ptolemaic dynasty, and then Caesar taking over, and all the other things. All of that knowledge is gone. Now, the issue is 
people say that set humanity back a thousand years because we didn't have the knowledge. Like there was a there was a a, a guy who w- who used to be in you know is a Sicilian guy who was able to apparently make mirrors set ships on fire. So he would basically have a big mirror on this. And he's from Syracuse. Uh, and he was from, and he'd have like a, a mirror and then they pointed at ships and the ships would combust. And that's how they fought off the Romans until the Romans finally took them over. Um, like, like a magnifying? Yeah, He's literally, literally like that. Sun. Now they've tried to do that. They've tried to repeat that. No one's yeah. been able did to figure that out. Did take care of this They one? did. They did actually. Oh, they did there try you go. It, But they couldn't, they obviously didn't have a mirror. So they had a bunch of people holding, you know, like Ikea mirrors. Oh. So I don't know how they, how they would have pulled that off, but that's supposedly what happened. And then of course, you know, you got... Uh, you got the Byzantines, which are just Romans that a German guy called Byzantines in, in the late 15th century. Mm-hmm. Um, they had something called Greek fire, which was something where literally they would have a pump on a boat and they would shoot fire that would not stop burning even when it hit the water and they just burn other people's fleets. So what, was it just like gas? Or it something? was like, a, a, apparently it was made out of some sort of pine needle or something like that. They still are not quite sure what it was. Um, but it's, there's accounts of it at, everywhere. There are things that are lost in this fire. And I don't think that's one of them that we, you know, we would probably have lost, uh, texts from, from ancient philosophers and things like that. The, the problem with that is that it's an overblown, um, the, the event itself is significant, but I think it speaks more to where people were re- religiously than where we were knowledge wise, because a lot of the information that was lost in that fire was actually brought back to life by the Arabic and then Muslim empires that came in around the 700s to, to the to the thousand year mark. They were the ones that brought back um, they, they 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 brought back Greek learning, and so the Western world loses Socrates. They lose. Uh, Plato, they lose, you know, some of this stuff. That's but, not true. But the, Socrates was my neighbor. He lived four di- uh, houses down. <laughs> He's talking about the local Toronto rapper. But what? Yes. What the um, uh, what the Arabs do, what the Muslims do, is they are the ones who take up the mantle. And so while Western Europe starts to lose and get objectively the, the you know society backslides, um, and that's part of what happens with Alexandria. That's more a symptom of a fall into intense religiosity, something that we cannot, even with some of the religious states that we have today, we cannot relate to how religious people were in in the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages in Europe. You cannot relate. Everything was around God. You have no, like, you have to study this stuff for years to be able to understand how religious these people were. And so I think the burning of Alexandria is a misnomer. We did not lose a thousand years of knowledge. Hmm. We lost some knowledge. Definitely shit in there that we will never get back. I, I completely grant you that. It's just that the way we teach Western history is the Arabic empire, which existed for 300 years, and the Muslim and Turkic empires that that pre- or, uh, uh, preceded it, um, those ones are, we don't talk about those because those people are not Western European. And so, you know, when you look at it in a more holistic view, it's just, a, a, a it's unfortunate, but it's the Roman empire disintegrating under partially religious grounds. Does that make sense? Jesse, is this what you guys talked about on Virgin? <laughs> no. <laughs> definitely. That's just not. my opinion. I'm sure there's some historians that would poke some holes in that. It would be that, funny but... if there was a first take style debate show for history. Yeah, like if the... somebody came at you and was like, no, I thought Alexandria was the most important event and human history would be a million times ahead if we had those books. Just That's a split wild. <laughs> just a split screen. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. It was your turn now, much. And I was like, no, I thought this was it. Inconsequential, and you guys went back and forth. <laughs> there, it would. And be how many rings does Alexandria have? <laughs> huh? I thought Julius Caesar had more championships. So those debates do happen, and that show would 100 percent work. The problem is historians are so anal about how they. Uh, deliver history that it's the fans of history it's the people like me that are the ones that are having the Mm -hmm. debate because we're not qualified to have it and then you bring on aaron Rodgers, and he says you know what vaccines you know he says aliens built the pyramids it couldn't have been people i'd I'd watch that show i freaking watch it too let's end on i found the sabers former playoff roster uh from the saber report who tweeted this out kane eichel reinhardt 
Hagel O'Reilly Evan Rodriguez. Hagel? Hagel was a saber. Shiri Middlestat VC. Carrier Jankowski Okpozo. That's the forward group. On D. Not as bad as you think. McCabe Montour. Jake McCabe. How did I forget? McNabb Miller. Kulikov Labushkin. And in that net, Allmark and Johansson. And then you also have Chad Ruedel. Um, and Brand, uh, Brandon Lemieux. Brandon Lemieux. And wow. Hudson Fashing. Wow. Not too bad. That's a that's a seven or eight seed. I they refuse might, to call them wild cards anymore. Might beat the Leafs. Might beat the Leafs. <laughs> might beat the Leafs. Wouldn't beat Alexandria. No, not at all. <laughs> oh no, he's got more rings. Let, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W Y L D E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.